Welcome everyone to today's webinar. We are here to talk about flexible and remote jobs with three awesome companies, Chef, PPD, and Xerox. Uh, this webinar is presented by Flex Jobs, and my name is Bree Weiler Reynolds, and I'm the senior content, sorry, senior career specialist at Flex Jobs, formerly director of content, so that's why that slipped in there. Um, and I'm very happy to be here with everybody today. Thank you all for attending. Before we go ahead and get started with the presentation, I do have some housekeeping notes to go over. So first of all, this is gonna be about a 60 minute webinar. We'll be going till the top of the hour, so 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, we will end the webinar with a fairly long Q&A session. We do about 20 minutes or more of question and answers. So you, the audience, will have a chance to ask your questions of the hiring representatives today. Um, you can, uh, oh, sorry, so this will be recorded. Um, so if you wanna refer back to it, we'll be sending out a link tomorrow to everyone who registered and attended. Uh, that features the recording of the webinar and a helpful handout that we've created. We're also going to share that handout with you on the GoToWebinar control panel, so be on the lookout for a link to download that handout. That should be coming in the questions or chat area of your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, and we, uh, as I said, we're going to be doing about 20 minutes or so of a Q&A at the end, so feel free to ask your questions as you have them throughout the webinar. You can also do that on your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if you don't see this control panel that I'm talking about, look around your screen for a little orange arrow. And if you click that orange arrow, your uh, GoToWebinar control panel should magically appear. Usually it hides itself if you're not using it. So look for that arrow, click it, and it should pop right up. Um, and then you'll also receive an email, as I mentioned, tomorrow. It'll have a link to the recording. It'll also have a link to the webinar. Uh, handout and it will have a survey that's a very short survey it's like three questions just asking you about the event and how you thought it was and ways that we can improve future events all right so let's get started with uh, some of the topics that we're going to be discussing today first I'll give a quick introduction about our three employer panel so that you know what to expect um, once we get to their section and then I'm gonna talk just briefly about flexible job market trends and flexible job search tips. So if you are new to the flexible job world, this should hopefully give you uh, an overview into what to expect. And also if you've been searching for a flexible job or you're already working flexibly or have worked flexibly, um, this will at least give you an idea of the up to the minute trends in flexible work so you know what you're getting yourself into with your current job search. And then we're gonna be hearing from, with, from reps from Xerox, PPD, and Chef and they'll tell you all about their companies, what they do, the types of flexible jobs they hire for, and, um, and what they look for in hiring flexible workers. And then as I said, we will open it up to audience Q&A. So just to give you an overview of who you're gonna be hearing from in a few minutes, we have three great employers here today. From Xerox, we'll be hearing from Martin Spaconi. He's the Director of Global Talent Acquisition. And from PPD, we'll be hearing from April Shell de Lima. She is the Senior Recruiting Manager. And at Chef, we'll be hearing from Rachel Coogan. She's the Director of Employee Experience. And so you're gonna hear from those three folks in just a little bit after I stop yammering on. But let's jump into some trends in the flexible job market. And so when I'm talking about flexible jobs, that's a very overarching term where I mean uh, either jobs that offer telecommuting, jobs that allow you to work a flexible schedule, jobs that have part-time schedules, or freelance jobs, or any combination of those. So you might have a full-time telecommuting job with a flexible schedule, or a part-time freelance job, or something like that. But essentially, when I say the phrase flexible jobs, I'm referring to all of those different types of flexibility. So this slide shows you the top career fields for flexible jobs. And this is what we compile each month at FlexJobs. We take a look at which career fields on our site out of 55 career categories that we look at, which of those have the most job postings each month. And month after month after month, these 15 tend to be at the top of the list. So they might fluctuate in and out depending on the time of year or particular hiring needs of some larger companies. But overall, these ones really do tend to be the strongest when it comes to offering flexible jobs. So you can see there's a huge variety here. There's medical and health, there's bilingual, data entry, software development, education and training, project management, lots of different ones to look at here. Um, and what I will say for anybody who's looking at this list and thinking, well, I don't see my career field listed, 
Uh, don't worry, this is out of 55 career fields, as I said. So there are is a good chance that there are flexible jobs out there for you. It's just that that particular career field might not be at the very top of the ones offering flexible jobs. But do some research and see what might be out there for you because it doesn't mean there's no flexibility out there. So I also wanted to touch on the most common remote jobs that we see because when we survey folks who use flex jobs or who visit flex jobs, we find that telecommuting is by far the most popular form of flexibility. So if I asked you to show your hands for anyone who's interested in telecommuting, I have a feeling our audience here, will, a lot of people would raise their hands. Um, and thank you to anyone who's raising your hand while listening to this virtually, because I just did the same thing. Uh, so these are the most common remote job titles that we see. What we did at FlexJobs, we asked our job research team to tell us when they're searching for jobs and vetting jobs and screening them and getting them on our site, what are they seeing over and over again in terms of remote job titles? And this is the list of the top 20 that they sent us. Uh, now this is out of thousands of job titles that they look at every day so or every week. So um, just don't worry if you don't see yours here again. It just means that it's not at the very tip top of what's most common for remote work, but it doesn't mean your job can't be done remotely. I actually just saw listings for um, telecommuting positions for things like assistant attorney general, um, chief operating officer, all sorts of different jobs that you might not necessarily think could be done from home. So there's a lot of surprising stuff out there. Uh, and actually, yes, Frank is asking in that order. Yep. <laughs> it does fluctuate a bit, but that's the order that they most commonly see them in. Uh, and so some keyword searching for flexible jobs. Here's some tips when you're out there on any type of website. Of course, if you're at FlexJobs, just for anybody who's not familiar, we offer only flexible job listings. So when you're on our site, you will be finding only professional level legitimate jobs that offer some type of flexibility. So you don't necessarily have to start searching with these keywords at FlexJobs because you already know that the jobs are going to be flexible in some way. But whether you're on you know, a, a career board from a specific company or you're on just a general job search board, these are some of the keywords to avoid and to use when you're out there searching for jobs. So if you're looking for telecommuting jobs in particular, we definitely recommend you stay away from the key phrases, work from home and work at home. And the reason is that these two phrases are very commonly used by scammers who are, are putting out fake work from, job, or work from home jobs and trying to lure people in because so many people do want to work this way. Um, they're trying to find folks who are uh, you know, looking for work from home jobs by using those keywords. Because it is a very common way to describe that type of work when you say, you know, most people don't say, I'd like to work remotely. When you're thinking about it, you're thinking, where do you want to work? You want to work from home. So it's a common phrase to think of, but we recommend avoiding it just to steer clear of the vast majority of the scams that are out there. Um, some keywords to use, there are lots of different ways to describe work from home jobs in a way that is less um, scam friendly. So that less column says telecommute job, virtual job, remote job, and so on. These are all different ways that we have seen companies describe their telecommuting openings. So when you're searching for telecommuting jobs, uh, you'll be able to you know, find them using these keywords and you'll find more legitimate jobs than you would scams. Um, if you're looking for freelance or contract work, that second column there has a bunch of different ways to say that. Each company has its own variation of how they describe these different types of work. So that's why we have all these keywords up there. I would definitely recommend using as many as possible when you're searching and just varying it um, you know, searching in, through different keywords to find those different opportunities because each company does say this in different ways. And then flexible schedules, if you're looking for something that allows for that flexibility in terms of scheduling or hours, these are some of the ways to say that on that right side column. Uh, work flexibility is a good general term or flex work options. Just to find out if a company supports flexibility in any way, um, many companies don't actually specify the type of flexible jobs that they're out putting out there even in their job listings. So you might actually be reading about a job that can be done from home or could be done with a flexible schedule, but the company might not actually put that in the listing because they don't wanna talk about that until the interview process or because it really depends on the manager for that job and their feelings on it. Um, or they just might want you to start working from the office first and then get the opportunity to work from home. So there's a lot of different reasons that companies don't put it out there, um, but that's something important to know about too is is you also have to look for general phrases like work flexibility and flexible work options, work-life balance, 
to see if you're even finding companies or if you can find companies that support the idea that uh, work and life should should sort of balance or there should be ways to reduce the friction between work and life um, through work-life balance types of things and work flexibility. All right, so let's talk a little bit about resumes for remote jobs. Um, so some things that we've seen that we uh, really liked at Flex Jobs, a number of different ways to, if you have previous experience working flexibly or working remotely, um, you can put that right on your resume. So companies that hire for those types of jobs do like to see some previous experience if you have it. Um, and so that's something important to note if you do have any experience working remotely, working a flexible schedule, uh, being a freelancer, to put that on your resume if that's what you are looking for. And that experience, I should say, that can be either formalized where it was a very formal uh, telecommuting arrangement where, you know, three days a week you worked from home, it was at your uh, manager's approval, you know, all that sort of stuff. Or it could be an informal arrangement, which the vast majority of people who work from, from home have an informal arrangement where they work from home on an ad hoc basis as needed. They might ask for, you know, two days next week. They might work from home a couple days a month. It might be during inclement weather or when their children are sick. But that also counts as experience. If you were able to be productive and you were telecommuting, um, that's fine to put down as well. You could put occasional telecommuting or ad hoc um, telecommuting, something like that. But so this person has that information displayed very prominently right on their resume where they've put the dates of their employment, their job title, and then independent contractor and telecommute. You can see it right there. It makes it very obvious for recruiters to see. This person's decided to put it in the pertinent technical skills section. This is a good way for people um, who either have experience or don't necessarily have experience working from home or working flexibly, but they've at least used the tools, um, so software programs and platforms that support effective telecommuting or flexible work. So this person has put those tools down that they know would help them be an effective telecommuter. And that just lets the employer know that they at least understand communication-wise what it takes to, to work from home. And then this one has uh, the summary of qualifications, which typically would go at the top of your resume. They've got here um, six years of experience working remotely and in flexible office environments. And I think that's a really nice way to phrase that, in flexible office environments, because it's sort of all-encompassing. You know, you might have, you know, telecommuted a little bit, had a flexible schedule a little bit. And sometimes managers change, you know, if you have different managers coming in and out, they might have different feelings about flexible work and they might be letting you work flexibly in different ways. So um, flexible office environments is kind of a nice all-encompassing phrase for that. And then focus on proactive communication, whether in office or working remotely. So this person's just kind of driving home the fact that they understand communication is a really key skill to have when they are um, working flexibly. And then, of course, they also have that down under their professional experience. And a lot of times I get asked, wait a minute, this person has work from home here, and you just told us <laughs> to not use the phrase work from home. The distinction is that the person has put it on their resume. They're not using it as a key, well, hopefully, they are not using it as a keyword search term when they're going out onto websites and searching for jobs. That's when you want to avoid work from home and work at home. But in just talking about how you work or putting it on your resume, that's a fine phrase to use. I probably would have recommended this person put telecommuting or remote work or virtual position just because it's, it's, it, that's how employers more commonly um, refer to it. But it's okay to put it here as long as you're not using it to search out on websites for different types of jobs. So that's the distinction there. All right. So that was my brief overview of telecommuting trends and some flexible job tips. Um, and if you have any other questions about that, I'm happy to answer some of those in the Q&A session. But I know that the biggest thing we're all here for today is to hear from our employers who are actually hiring for flexible and telecommuting positions. So as I said before, we have representatives from Xerox, PPD, and Chef, and they're all going to be talking about their uh, flexible and remote positions available, what their companies do, and then how they, how, what they look for when they're hiring uh, remote and flexible workers. So I'm going to toss this over first to April Shell de Lima at PPD. April, thank you very much for being here. Let me get over to your slide. All right. And uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about PPD and what you hire for and, uh, and what you look for in flexible and remote workers. Hi, this is April de Lima. Um, 
Sorry, I tried to unmute myself and ended up disconnecting for a second, but <laughs> I'm glad you're back. That happened. I hope I didn't miss anything important, important in the introduction. <laughs> nope, not at all. I basically just said, here's April at TBD, take it away. Okay, okay, great. Um, well, so yeah, so my, my name is April DeLima. Um, I am a senior um, manager within recruitment with, with PPD. Um, I've been here for almost four years. Um, and PPD is a, uh, a contract research organization, which means that uh, we partner with pharmaceutical companies, uh, biotechnology companies, medical device companies to help them um, get uh, life-changing therapies to market. Um, so that, uh, that kind of manifests itself in a lot of different services that we offer, but that's kind of on a, on a big picture level what we do. Um, we were founded in uh, 1985 as a one-person consulting firm here in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is where I sit and where our global headquarters is. So we've grown really, really very, very rapidly, um, especially over the last five years, and we now um, are close to a 20,000 um, employee organization, um, and we we are, are now global and have operations in um, all over the world and um, are active in about 50 countries. So um, I guess to give you a, a little bit of a, of a picture about what the, the industry that we're in, um, in does is um, one of our, uh, the main focus of what we do is really to, at PPD, is to improve health. So, as a as a company, we're really very purposeful in that. So everyone here comes to work knowing that that that's what we do. So um, even as a as a manager within recruitment, I know that when I come to work, I'm the the team. My team is working to bring people in, and ultimately those folks are working with our clients who are pharmaceutical companies and biotechnology companies. And they're helping to get these drugs to market that ultimately are, are here to improve health. So I think that's, you know, one of the, the best parts about working here. So I kind of, I like to highlight that when I talk about PPD. Um, the way that we do that, which I've alluded to, is helping our customers to deliver those life-changing therapies and, and get those, um, those therapies to market. And then the strategy that we use, I think, is important to, to touch on, and um, I've included it here, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit, but the, our uh, strategy is to bend the cost and time curve of drug development. So if you think about um, companies that are trying to develop drugs, they spend all this money and time investing in research and development. And as they get to the point where they're ready to try to take them to market, the longer it takes to prove if a drug is successful or not um, and to, to get it approved by, uh, in the U.S. at the uh, FDA and um, outside of the U.S. by other regulatory authorities, the longer that takes, um, you know, the more, the more money it has to be invested and, um, you know, the, the, uh, obviously the longer it takes to get that drug to market. So our goal is to help them to get them to, to get the, um, the results of their trials more quickly um, and you know at less cost so that ultimately they can capitalize on the uh, research and development and, and move on to creating new therapies that ultimately are available to improve health. So that's kind of on a big picture scale what we do. Um, at PPD, the remote-based nature of uh, a lot of our positions is really, really central. So um, one of the main pieces of, of what we do is we monitor clinical trials. So clinical trials that are being conducted all over the world, and I'll, I'll speak specifically in North America, but um, we have monitors who need to be available to go to those sites and, and find and you know, basically audit the research that's going on. So it's very important that we have folks dispersed geographically across the, the country. So that's one of our, our larger positions, and those, those folks are all remote-based, and those are the, the clinical research associates. We also have um, biostatistician and clinical SAS programmers, and those are individuals who are helping to make sure that we're processing the data that comes out of the clinical trials in a way that um, our clients are able to use it to determine the efficacy of the drugs that, that are being um, that are that are in in the trial. So 
um, those positions are located, um, you know, we, we have people working remotely in those roles as well. We also have project managers that are remote and medical writers. This is just a few of the positions that we have that are remote-based positions. Um, I think uh, about a third of our staff is remote, so about a third of our open positions and, and hires are remote-based positions. Um, so I will say our positions are full time. They are 40, every bit of 40 hours a week. So um, they're not flexible necessarily in that sense, but um, we do provide uh, a, a really good setup for remote based workers. So individuals are provided with um, a laptop, a docking station, monitors. Um, we uh, do reimburse for internet. Um, up to, I believe, $50 a month. We also um, have an, op an option for an internet-based cell phone that, um, that we can use. We also have an option for individuals to bring their own device and be reimbursed for a portion of that cell phone um, cost. So I guess the other big piece that I'll point out, and I know I'm, I'm kind of have used up my time, but um, the other, other piece is that as a large company, we do have um, all of the support that you would expect from a large company. So we have an IT department who, you know, if you have issues with your, your laptop or, or any challenges, you know, we have a, a, an entire department to support folks. Um, we have a training department, so we have a really, really impressive training um, uh, set of training for all of our positions that uh, really sets individuals up for success, especially when you're in a remote-based role, um, you know, not on site, but you, you still have access to, to really strong uh, training tools. So I, that's, I think I've used my five minutes, but um, so I'll, I'll turn it back to Bree and be happy to answer any specific questions that anyone has during the question and answer period. Awesome. Thank you so much, April. And I also did want to highlight, I know you sent over a nice graphic, too, that I just wanted to show everybody before we move to the next person, um, just so they can get a sense of, of PPD's global footprint, as it says. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Thanks a lot. And now I'm going to give the floor over to Rachel Coogan. And let me get over to that slide. We're going a little bit out of order here today. There we go. So Rachel Coogan is the Director of Employer Experience at, or Employee Experience, I should say, at Chef. Rachel, thank you very much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much, Bree and Flex Jobs, for um, inviting me and Chef to talk with everyone today. Um, so the first question um, I'm sure you all are wondering is, what is Chef, and do we provide something for cooks or chefs? And so, um, no, we don't. Um, we are not the software behind Blue Apron, which is a question I actually get a lot now. Uh, so what we actually do is we are the company that creates the infrastructure application and security automation behind companies like Facebook, GE, Nordstrom, and Disney. Um, and our purpose um, as a company is we really want to make the life of IT operators easier and more impactful, and just in general improve the way work gets done at innovative and transformative companies in the US and, uh, and worldwide. What I do here at Chef is I lead um, our employee experience team, which is comprised of our, um, you know, your typical HR as well as recruiting and facilities team. Our facilities support both um, our employees who are at our physical offices as well as all of our um, work from home and work road warrior employees. Um, we have about 300 employees now, just about, um, and we're in over 30 U.S. states um, and five countries. We're in Germany, the U.K., the Netherlands, Canada, and Australia. Um, and since, uh, for about five years now, we've been quite remote friendly. Um, you know, we hire the best and the brightest wherever they are. Uh, we um, actually strive not to just be remote friendly, but actually remote first. And that's something that's been a big initiative for us for the past several years, which has um, been really exciting to see that um, transform and the kind of talent that we can uh, bring into the chef fold once we really opened those um, the doors up to just find the right people wherever they happen to be and make sure that they're empowered to be successful at Chef. Um, th the reason we're able to do that is trust and accountability are some of our core values here at Chef. Um, you know, we're out there, we're hiring super smart, 
adults um, and we trust them to be able to get their work done however they need to do it, you know, assuming that everything's legal, um, but uh, to, to get the job done when they need to get it done. They know what their objectives are. They know what they need to do to meet it. And so we're just really here to support that and make sure um, they can do that and really have uh, what our CEO, Barry Chris, likes to say is a work-life mix. Um, sometimes it's a little more heavily focused on work. Sometimes it's a little bit more on life and we trust our employees to be able to make that decision um, for themselves. Some of the things that we offer our um, employees, both those who are in office as well as those who work from home, um, one of those is unlimited PTO. Again, this just goes back to kind of that trust and accountability. Take the time off when you need that time to get out and recharge. Um, we also offer for our remote specific employees a $1,000 desk stipend um, so that you can get your home office set up um, in a way that's going to work well for you. They, of course, get a, a laptop and all the monitoring gear that you need to be to be successful at home. We offer um, a mobile um, phone stipend. We realize that people are using their smartphones to do work on the go almost as much as they're using their laptops. And we also pay um, an internet stipend um, for any of our remote employees. We um, are hiring about 30 employees between now until the end of the year. And for our remote um, focused jobs, those are primarily in our sales um, in our sales organization, especially technical sales folks, um, our engineering, so our core engineering and community engineering team. So whether you're developing our product or you're working with our open source community on some of their projects, we um, have roles in both of those fields, as well as our customer success team. So that can be uh, more like an account manager type role or um, what we call a customer architect again. So really somebody who's an engineer at their core who's out there interfacing with customers to make sure that they're successful with Chef. Um, I personally, I don't work from home much. I um, am an office type person. I work from home for a bit, uh, but I have two young children and they are loud and needy. So I work here from our Seattle headquarters, um, but I'm also afforded the flexibility to work from home or work on the road if I'm traveling either for work or for family um, to, to just do what I need to do to make sure that I'm getting that nice blend, uh, that work-life mix. So um, please go to our website, check out our jobs. Um, I'd love to um, get some of you into interview. I think that's it for me. I'll pass it back to you, Bree. All right, Rachel, thank, thank you very much. And yes, I completely uh, sympathize with the two kids who are loud and needy. <laughs> I have well, one kid and one dog, but either one of them might qualify for those categories on any given day. But thank you very much. I think that's a great overview of Chef and, uh, and what you guys do. Um, and so now let's turn it over to uh, Martin Spaconi at Xerox. Martin, are you on the line? I know we were having some technical issues before. All right, it looks like, oh, Martin, are you there? I am here. Martin, hello, <laughs> welcome. Uh, so Martin is the Director of Global Talent Acquisition at Xerox. And Martin, thank you very much for being here. Sorry about all the uh, snafus we've had today, but glad that you're on the line. And please tell us a little bit more about Xerox and what, or not more, but tell us about Xerox and what you all uh, offer in terms of flexible work and the, the, what you look for in hiring flexible workers. Sure, great. Well, thanks for the invite. Really happy to be here. Uh, we can call me Marty because Martin typically is followed by my middle name, and that's usually my mother calling me. So we'll 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 keep that <laughs> we'll keep that. Will do. Uh, Xerox is uh, well. Xerox is probably the the grandfather of the the company is represented here today. We we're founded here in Rochester, New York, which is where I'm based. Uh, 110 years ago, 111 years ago, and uh, we've been a, a technology leader and innovator uh, in the print uh, in, in really the innovation space. Uh, for all of that time, lots of uh, well-known stories about Xerox and the innovation that's come out of uh, our centers like Palo Alto Research uh, in California. But we're founded here in upstate New York. Our headquarters is in Norwalk, Connecticut. And we've really been, uh, over the course of time, again, innovating the way the world communicates and works uh, via through uh, our managed print services, our, our workflow solutions, our production print graphic communications. A lot of the, the things that I think we probably all take for granted uh, when it comes to printing uh, really stems from the innovation that Xerox uh, has brought to market. Walk, uh, we work across almost every vertical you can think of. Uh, it's, you know, been a, it's been an interesting ride for me personally. I've been with Xerox for 10 years. Uh, I've had the benefit of uh, having been assigned
find more responsibility of management over that time. And uh, even in, over the course of the last year, as we transformed, separated our services business to once again, it'd be a standalone technology business. This is some exciting times for Xerox. We recently went through the uh, largest product launch in our history, uh, 29 new products this past spring. Uh, and that's really dependent on a whole uh, variety of different types of workers. Uh, uh, telecommuters and, and for, uh, flexible workers certainly play a large role in that. Most of our salespeople, a lot of our salespeople, are in the field and flexible. Uh, I was a flexible worker myself in, in a prior life before I came to Xerox at Unisys Corporation. I worked for six years from the home office, uh, and it was a perfect time in my life to do that. So I, I know firsthand the benefits of having a flexible uh, work environment and having a home office. And today we offer opportunities really in a, a number of different areas that are telecommute, that are flexible workforce. Uh, we have part-time, uh, and it may be in the form of either being on a payroll, as a payroll, or coming in as a contractor to Xerox. Uh, we do leverage contractors or what we call as, uh, Xerox temporary employees uh, on a flexible basis as well. Freelance is an area that we're beginning to explore. Uh, how do we leverage the skills and expertise that people bring, pushing in on projects and the like? Uh, I'm certainly a big advocate of um, thinking outside the box or thinking differently about how we leverage our, our employees. Everybody's got uh, you know, a work-life mix. I like that, the way that was put, um, where we, we have things that draw our attention away from work, but nonetheless, uh, you know, we need to get our work done. So, uh, you know, I... I, I've been the, the recipient again of a lot of great things here at Xerox, uh, and you know, as the director of talent acquisition globally, uh, looking at our global workforce and how it is that we meet talent where talent is at. Uh, I think that we need to, uh, again, we need to continue to broaden our scope as uh, we entertain flexible workers and flexible workspaces. Great, Marty. Thank you so much. And uh, so just a reminder for everybody here um, who's listening in, feel free to add your questions to the question box. I know we have a bunch already to go through, but as we're starting to answer these questions, when I move it over to the uh, question and answer session, um, love to have some more questions coming in. So we've got these three recruiters here who are able to uh, actually answer your particular questions that you have about flexible and remote jobs with their companies. So let's head on over to the questions slide here. So we've got some information on each of the companies, their Flex Jobs page, as well as their company website, and also the handout. Um, if you want to take that, there's a link on the uh, the chat box for everybody to click on and download the handout, which has some of this information and a few other key details uh, about each company. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do this a little bit round robin -y. So for questions that have to do with every company, I'm going to ask the question and then ask uh, April, Rachel, and Marty to all weigh in. And then there are some questions that are also directed to specific companies. So I will direct those to the specific person at that company. But then of course, for the other companies, if you all have something to say about that in your company, please feel free to, uh, to uh, speak up. All right, so the first question, we often get questions from our international audience um, asking, uh, I should say International Flex Jobs is based in the United States, so we use that as kind of our home country. Um, and so for folks who are based outside of the United States, uh, do do your companies hire for people who are based outside of the U.S.? Um, so let's go around and find out. First of all, from April at PPD, um, do you folks hire internationally? Yeah, certainly. Um, so we we are a global company. Um, I would say um, probably a, a most of our hiring is in North America, but um, but I'd say to the tune of like sixty percent. Um, or so of our hires. Um, we hired four, about 4,000 people um, last in, last year in 2016 globally. So there's a lot of hiring that's done um, outside of the United States for sure. Awesome, good to know. And then over to Rachel at Chef. How about you folks and international hires? Yeah, um, we hire um, in five different countries currently and are pretty opportunistic about it, um, especially if it makes sense from a business perspective. If um, usually the first types of roles that we'll hire internationally are more um, sales, but we will look at engineers um, out of the US as well. All right, great. And then Marty over at Xerox, how about you folks and in international hires? Yeah, absolutely, as a global 
uh, company in 160 different countries. Yeah, absolutely. We hire globally. I know that there are jobs posted today that are, uh, I believe that there's some in India, there's some in the UK, uh, some in the Nordic region, uh, Canada, of course. But uh, say, again, similarly to the answer uh, for PPD, we hire predominantly in, in North America, but there are global opportunities at Xerox. Wonderful. Great to know. Um, and then the next question is also for all companies. I had mentioned earlier in the presentation that companies use different language to describe their flexible jobs, their remote jobs, telecommuting, um, whatever you want to say. So can you each um, talk about the types of language that you use to describe those different types of flexibility at your companies if there is a common language? I know sometimes it's not even consistent you know, from job listing to job listing within a company, but in general, if somebody were to go to these websites and start to look for for flexible work options, what type of, of keywords do you all tend to use um, when describing flexible and remote work? Uh, April over at PPD, how about you folks? Yeah, so um, I, I think it probably does it probably does vary some. Um, the, the bulk of the postings in the United States will probably say home-based or remote. Um, I, that being said, we for a lot of our harder to fill positions, we've we've been trying to get creative with our job postings to try to try different ways um, to try to tap into different folks, um, like a lot of the people on the call today, uh, who are looking for this type of work. Uh, so we've we have gotten a little bit creative with with trying to adjust the way that we do that. But the vast majority of them uh, most likely will say uh, home based or remote based. Bree, are you muted? Maybe I am muted. See, <laughs> to everyone. Uh, so that was uh, I was going. Thank you, uh, April, for that. And then I was going to go to Rachel next at Chef. Uh, how about you, folks, and any flexible work lingo that you tend to use in your uh, job description? Uh, we're pretty consistent. I think we use remote as the term uh, of choice when we're posting jobs or talking about jobs externally. Uh, you know, internally we call it remote or work from home is are the terms that you see mostly. But if you're looking for job postings, remote is the word. All right, perfect. And then Marty at Xerox, do you folks have any particular uh, keywords or language that you use to describe this type of work? Well, our our managers have a habit of getting very creative. So uh, as far as continuity goes, I, you know, most often you're going to see remote, virtual. Uh, there's use of telecommute. Um, but by and large, I would say those are probably the most, the most frequently used in the job descriptions that I'm aware of. All right, great. Thank you all very much. I think that'll help a lot of people be able to pinpoint what they're looking for. Um, all right, so the next question has to do with training. And this was actually a question for Chef and PPD specifically. But Marty, I will definitely give you a chance to weigh in about what training looks like at, um, at Xerox as well. Um, so the question is, what does uh, training, so the training program work, how, excuse me, how does the training program work at uh, Chef and PPD? So let's, uh, let's go to Rachel first for a change. Rachel at Chef, what does the training program look like if there is any particular, you know, formalized training program um, for Chef or just any informal training as well? Absolutely. So I think we have a couple of different types of training. You have, you know, your new employee orientation. And if you're a manager, we have something called manager boot up. Those can all be done remotely and often are. Uh, for orientation, we love it if people can come out to our Seattle office. Um, they may not get an opportunity to come out here often. So we definitely invite them out for that first week to come here. Um, and then we, we do a mix of different uh, types of trainings. We use a tool called Zoom. Um, and so that's a video conferencing tool where you can do share screen um, and it has that like Brady Bunch view of all the different folks who are in the training. Um, and we, we actually have a placard that we have in all of our physical offices and all of our meeting rooms. I have one right next to me currently that has some best practices for all the people on the call to remember that it is a um, remote first type of call. So even if you're in a conference room and you're on the call, you make sure you have your video on. So as you're going through the training or talking through a, a particular 
discussion topic. Uh, people can read your body language. Um, so we've gotten pretty uh, disciplined about that. But there are just some trainings. I'm actually, um, one of our big employee experience initiatives this year is a communication training called Fierce Communication. Um, and it's really um, an experiential type of training. It's better um, in a classroom. So we've held a couple here in Seattle and we'll have you know, the folks in the uh, Washington region will come to that as well as people who may be flying in for other team things. And then what I've done is I've sort of heat mapped out where we have the rest of our employees. Um, and we've done a San Francisco training. I'm going to London in a couple of weeks for our, um, our European um, team to go out there and get the training. And then we're doing New York. So we really do a mix. And it just, um, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. We're just like, what makes the most sense for this training? Um, and how can we get it into the hands of our employees quickly in a way that will be effective. All right, great. Thank you very much, Rachel. And, uh, and April over at PPD, same question for you. How does, how does training work at PPD? Yeah, so training is, um, is actually something that we're really uh, are known for at PPD. So we've been, um, for the last six years, we've been named to training top 125. Uh, list of U.S. businesses um, that excel in employee learning and development. So it is something that we've uh, that that's really important to us. Um, I would say it it varies by position. So different positions have different, very specified training. Um, other positions are more on the job training. Um, in addition to that, we do have a, a third-party education provider with a catalog of 30,000 um, virtual trainings that employees have access to. So that's anything from uh, Excel training to, and other software training to um, communication training and, and management training and, and um, really a, a variety of, of opportunities that anyone has access to is just one of our standard benefits. Um, we also have some standardized um, proprietary trainings that uh, are uh, at different levels. So we have one that's um, an individual contributor training that you, you have a cohort of peers and you start together and some is classroom learning, some is, um, is, is done virtually, some is done uh, via is just independent online training. So there's a lot of different training opportunities at, at PPD, but overall I would say um, that uh, it, it definitely is a um, one of our strengths. All right, awesome. Thank you very much. And then over to Marty. Um, same question: What does training look like at Xerox for your flexible and remote workers? Yeah, so training uh, training for everyone is is really a, a web based. Uh, and we use web based as a vehicle to deliver the training. It's a learning at Xerox portal that. Uh, similar to, again to PPD, it's it's uh, a vast catalog of trainings, everything from your Microsoft Office suite to you know, critical conversations and the like. It it does offer that flexibility for uh, our employees to train as they need to. Uh, there is training, of course, and Xerox has been well known for years for sales training, and that's something that most people will travel to get some training somewhere uh, at the start of their career, but by and large, everything is is online. All right, perfect. I think that makes sense. Even for in-office workers, it seems to, to be going that way for sure. Um, all right, so let's see. The next question, we've actually gotten a number of questions for this. I know I talked about or asked about international hiring earlier, but for a number of folks on the call today, they're actually, um, either looking to get into the digital nomad lifestyle or are already in the digital nomad lifestyle. We have one person here who says they're traveling around um, in the country in an RV, which sounds pretty great. Um, so as far as working within the United States, are there any location restrictions that your company has? I know some companies um, have to hire people to work in a particular state, and if they're gonna be working outside of that state for a prolonged period of time, that's not good. Um, so what sorts of location restrictions, if any, do you have um, in general? I know it might vary from position to position, uh, but for folks who are working remotely from each of your companies. Um, so let's go back over to Rachel at Chef. Rachel, how about you folks? Uh, this is something we battle with a little bit. Um, we want to be as flexible as possible, but um, we do have to be mindful of, um, you know, business and tax uh, constraints um, that we have when you have somebody who is constantly on the go or maybe wanting to work a year in Europe. Um, it just has different visa and tax implications. Um, so within the U.S., we're pretty flexible. You can move 
you can move anywhere within the U.S. and um, and that's fine. And the RV thing would be okay. We would just need to make sure we understand uh, where we should be doing your payroll taxes. Um, but pretty flexible there. When it when we start to look internationally, um, just because we want to make sure that we are taking care of all of our obligations as a company, that gets a little trickier. And we ask people to make sure they're keeping any of that travel um, under three months. All right, great. And I think it is very generous of you to say it gets a little trickier when, when people move around internationally because I know as I've heard from uh, folks working in HR dealing with this, it can get super duper tricky. So, um, but that's great to know that you guys can accommodate at least, you know, that, that three month window too. I think that will um, be good for a lot of people to hear. So thank you very much for that, Rachel. And uh, Marty over at Xerox, how about you folks and um, hiring people who might move around within the United States? Um, do you have any location restrictions? I mean, really the, the, the primary restriction that we have is the ability to be online. Uh, so to the extent that you are online and that uh, you're able to, again, complete your work, uh, then it's not, I would say it's probably not as big a concern. Now, again, you know, going the flexible route and, and we've had flexible work arrangements for our technology business for over 10 years is still depending on the level of job that you have or the type of responsibilities that you respond that you have uh, in your in that particular job uh, is going to be dependent on, on I guess you're gonna have some of the restrictions that are that will um, be governed by where you need to be uh, near an airport you know being able to travel uh, but a digital nomad is, is a, I think, a, a newer kind of nomenclature to probably our leadership here. I think that they would pr probably be a little bit lost if we were to talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, it, I think that uh, the, the fact that you need to be online, you need to be able to be uh, communicating with clients, um, you know, salespeople is going to be a little bit different. You're responsible for covering territories and the like. So you, that limits it as well. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. And yeah, digital nomad, I think that's still, even for people who've worked remotely for a long time, like myself, that digital nomad is still something that I look to with kind of awe and um, uh, I'm not quite sure how it works, but I'm very in awe of the people who are able to do it. So, uh, well, thank you very much, Marty. Um, and then finally, uh, April at PPD, how about you folks and any location restrictions when you're hiring within the U.S.? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think probably similar to, to Chef and Xerox, it depends on the position. Some of our, you know, as I mentioned earlier, some of our monitoring roles, um, they have geographic uh, requirements um, and and uh, they can be anywhere. You just have to be in the same place for a consistent period of time because you have sites that are assigned to you. Um, and so you're and it's kind of based on your location. Um, so, but that's just one role. I think the other roles that we have that are remote, uh, you could you could really do them from from anywhere. So there's there's not a lot of um, restrictions from from our side. Again, you, we would just need to to work through any uh, challenges with regard to the, the payroll um, taxes and making sure that we're compliant. But beyond that, I think uh, yeah, there's there's no real restrictions. All right, that sounds good. Um, and so the next question that we have has to do with uh, salary and benefits for your job. So I know um, some of you touched briefly on this, just to, on the benefits and, and um, things like that that you might offer, but there are um, oftentimes differences within each company in terms of how you set salaries for flexible jobs. If there's a difference between the salary you'd make in office versus working from home uh, and stuff like that. So if you have any details to offer about the um, salary, how you set salary, that sort of thing for each of your jobs, and then also benefits. Who's eligible for benefits um, and what kinds of benefits do you offer? That would be great. Um, so let's start out with Rachel at Chef. Yeah, uh, this is one we've spent a lot of time thinking about, um, and what we've decided is it's it's all the same for us. So um, the the impact that you're going to have to the business is not different if you're working in Seattle than if you're working in Iowa, um, and so we don't um, 
we will pay you a Seattle rate if you are in the middle of Oklahoma where the cost of living is a bit different. So what we actually do is we create salary bands for each particular job and um, at a particular level. And we put the midpoint of that band, we base it at 70th percentile of the market looking at Seattle pay rates. Um, if you are in a more expensive city, say London, New York, or LA, we do allow some flexibility outside of the bands because we understand that those cities are a bit more expensive than Seattle, but um, we find Seattle to be a pretty good barometer. Um, it's pretty decent pay wage if you're living here, if you're at 70th percentile of market, or if you're living you know, somewhere else within the US. Um, so that's worked well for us, and it also makes it a lot less complicated if you have somebody moving from um, you know, a more expensive to a less expensive market. Like We don't generally have to get into that. Um, we do, it, it's a little bit trickier international, and this is still a bit of a learning for some of our executives. Um, in particular, um, like Germany, engineers typically make a bit less money um, than they would here in the US. And so trying to figure out what is going to feel fair for our, um, our people managers when we're looking at compensation for some of their engineers who are in Germany, for instance. Um, in terms of benefits, so we, um, we do offer benefits for all of our employees, and um, we only have about two part-time employees, but they're at least four days a week, so they're benefit eligible as well. Um, and it's uh, medical, vision, dental. We pay 100% of your premiums um, and 50% for any dependents, spouse, or uh, domestic partner. Um, we offer life insurance, um, short-term disability, long-term disability. We have 12 weeks parental leave. Um, uh, paid parental leave um, for our U.S. employees and at least that good for any of our international employees. Um, uh, it's also 12 weeks of family um, or short-term disability leave to take care of yourself if you're, um, you know, having surgery or not well um, or if somebody in your family isn't. Um, and just a pretty robust but a pretty basic, I would say, um, benefits offering. Again, the one thing that does um, differentiate us a lot is our unlimited PTO, so complete flex PTO. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, cool. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. And uh, Marty over at Xerox, how about you folks and how you kind of determine salary and benefits for flexible workers? So uh, similar to Rachel, I mean, we, we have, we pay you for the job that you're doing. So the, the salaries, if you're a full-time worker, then salaries will be based upon whatever the job is in the band that you are hired into. Uh, it's more of a national rate, not necessarily dependent on a particular area. We take a look at the obviously the salary data um, midpoint and the like. Uh, it, in, in, if it's regional or if it's global, then it's in local currency, and we're. Uh, I guess I, I haven't seen much variation in that. Uh, as far as part-time workers go, and, and uh, benefits are considered, we offer benefits for full-time workers, and it's a similar type of package that you see elsewhere. The medical, uh, you know, we offer a health savings account, dental vision. Uh, there's flexible spending accounts. For healthcare and dependent care, uh, life and accidental death uh, type of insurances, short-term disability and long-term disability. Employees can purchase additional vacation as well, 401k stock plan with match. So pretty standard benefits package, but that's again for full-time workers. All right, great. Thank you very much. I think I think so far you guys are, are dispelling some of the myths that we hear that you know all telecommuters are going to make less if they work from home and all that sort of stuff. I think it really does come down to how each company sets um, salary and benefits for the particular locations and all of that, and each company does it slightly differently. So I really appreciate you all taking the time to talk about that. And I know um, we also have April at APD to um, answer the same question. So April, how about you folks and uh, salary and benefits for flexible workers? Sure, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say similar to the others, the uh, salary should not, is not gonna uh, differ for a remote-based worker than, um, to to a office based worker so their their salary bands are based we have salary bands per position per country really so they're they're going to be the same um, as far as our benefits go uh, all of our full-time positions uh, are eligible for benefits and it's uh, i'd say pretty pretty standard similar so we have uh, health and, and wellness so um, we do have a, a medical uh, flex spending account we have a dependent um, care flex spending account. Um, we have um, some adoption assistance, paid adoption leave. I think that's a little bit different than than some others. Um, and then, of course, a 401k with with matching life insurance, disability. So 
pretty pretty standard. All right, awesome. And standard is good. <laughs> That's always very good. Uh, and so for the last question here, um, we're having a number of people ask a variation of a question that basically comes down to, um, what is one piece of advice that you could give to an applicant when they're submitting their application that would help that applicant get a response? Um, so what are some things that you look for or that you are screaming for uh, when people submit applications that would help you to say like, oh yes, we wanna talk to this person? Uh, so I think that's a good note to leave on because it gives everybody in the audience some homework to do to make their applications kind of uh, have those things that you're looking for. Um, so if we can just go around Robin one last time, let's go over to Rachel at Chef. How about you folks and what somebody could do in their resume, cover letter, their application to uh, get a response back from you? I think the best piece of advice I can offer is to not leave the recruiter um, or whoever's going to be reviewing your resume with any questions. So you should hopefully be able to glean from a job posting um, what it is they're looking for exactly. So the less work the person reviewing your resume has to do to sort of make those connections as to why you're a fit, the more likely you are to be, you know, um, called in for an interview. I think um, when I have friends and family asking me for advice, it doesn't matter remote or anything. I think just in general, like make it easy for the person looking at your resume, looking at your cover letter to understand why you're a fit. Um, if you, if you have used different language to describe the same thing that they're asking for, but they're using a different, um, noun or verb for it, like I, I think matching always helps. It makes it really easy and really quick um, to say, oh, these are the same things. They've been doing the same thing. Awesome. And that's just what we were talking about, too, with, you know, what do, you, what do each of your companies call remote work or telecommuting or, or home-based, you know, using that same language, too. I think that, that makes total sense and ties right in. Thank you very much, Rachel. And uh, April at PPD, how about you folks and what, what would help to make somebody stand out in their application? Yeah, I was gonna say something um, really very similar to Rachel and that's, um, you know, you, you should really adjust your resume for the position that you're applying for um, to make it clear that that, that is the position that you, that you actually want. Um, you'd be surprised how many people apply for a position um, where the, you know, subject line of their resume or the, you know, the top objective of their resume is to get a, a different type of position than what they're applying for. So I think mm -hmm. just really making sure that you're tweaking it and making sure that you're targeting the position that you're applying for and that it's, um, to Rachel's point, that it's easy to see why this is a good fit for you. All right, awesome. So I'm hearing, yeah, lots of tailoring and, uh, and matching the position to the uh, the application materials that you send in. Very good advice. Um, and then over to Marty at Xerox. How about you folks? Yeah, I, unfortunately, I'm not going to probably sound all that creative in my response, only because I, I, well, I agree with April and Rachel. Uh, reading the job description is something that people don't do often enough. I think really digesting what the, the critical skills are, the competencies that a company is looking for, and answering that question by way of putting your resume in a format and in uh, explaining your skills and experience in a way that's going to resonate positively with the recruiter. You know, similarly, the jobs that are posted that are using the language like virtual or remote or telecommute, if there are jobs that say that the role is in New York or that role is in Chicago, and you're applying for it thinking that it would suddenly become a telecommute job, uh, that's probably not going to garner you much attention from the recruiter either, because if it's something that you're looking for from a work from home type of scenario, they'll pass right over your resume. And the last piece of advice I'd probably give is that, you know, be uh, discriminating in the role that you're applying for. The thing that we, that is a turnoff at least has been for me, I know it is for my team, is that when you see a, uh, a candidate apply for many, many jobs, serial posters, uh, <laughs> we tend to, click it off because we know people are not are not looking at the job description carefully enough. I think that's such good advice because yeah, sometimes you see a number of positions that you know technically you're qualified for and you kind of want to apply for all of them and you just blanket uh, send out applications and really it's the tailored, very specific, well-crafted applications that are going to get results. That's what I hear from all of you guys. Uh, well, thank you. That's that's huge. I think that gives people here um, some good advice on things they can start doing because I know a number of people have said they've gone to your websites already. They're looking for open jobs there. 
and now they know what to do with their applications once they find that job listing is really dissect that job listing and make sure that your resume and cover letter uh, reflect how you are tailor-made for that particular job. Um, well, thank you all very much. This was a, a wonderful discussion, great question and answers. Thank you to all the audience um, for your questions. And then thank you to Marty at Xerox, April at PPD, and Rachel at Chef for your time today and for all the insights into what it takes to get a flexible job with your companies. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Bree. Thank you. Thank you, Bree. All right, and for everybody else, best of luck with your job search and be on the lookout for an email tomorrow about 24 hours from now with a link to a recording of this webinar and some other really good information. Oh, and one last slide to throw up here. Um, so there will be a little quick survey after the webinar. It's also included in that email tomorrow if you have to go and you can't take it right now. Um, and then you can also find, about, find out about upcoming webinars that are hosted by FlexJobs by going to our blog, that's flexjobs.com slash blog, and then going to FlexJobs resources and then the job search webinars and videos page. You can also find tons of videos from previous webinars that we've done this year, last year, for the past five years or so. Um, on lots of different companies that are hiring for flexible work to find out other really good information uh, from those folks. So thank you once again for everybody who was here today and have a great rest of the day.